G'day, I'm Sean and the Seaforce motors are now twice as responsive thanks to SUP 2.0. We're introducing two major new features in SUP 2.0 for both the Seaforce Mini and the Seaforce Plus motor. Now the first feature is that we've made the lens motors twice as responsive, so they now take half as long to start moving once you move the focus knob, which is a really big change actually. The second new feature is called encoder mode, which gives DPs and operators a way to manually move lens barrels that have a lens motor attached to them, still maintaining lens data, and more of that in a second. Now, this firmware update is available right now from arri.com slash sups. It's freely available. Go and download it. Go and read the release notes. All the instructions for updating are in the release notes. And I will also give you a quick walkthrough of how to do the software update at the end of this video. Twice as responsive. As I mentioned, this is a pretty major change. I think any focus puller who installs the new firmware will immediately notice how much snappier the lens motors feel. It really feels like I have a much more direct connection to the lens motor itself. The beta testing feedback that we've got has been fantastic and you really kind of have to go and try it for yourself and I think you'll fall in love. The uh, update itself, well, it's just for the lens motors, so it will work with any hand unit, any motor controller, it doesn't affect that. It's just reducing the input lag on the motor side, which is pretty cool. So if you're using a WCU4 or an SXU1, then you will still have the same level of improvement. We're looking to bring this to Seaforce Mini RF as well, or at least evaluating if that is possible. But otherwise, Seaforce Mini M Plus, that's where we're at at the moment. Now, we've got a pretty cool setup to show you the difference between the old and the new firmware. Now, this is kind of a unique setup. I've got the engineering team to develop me a custom firmware, which allows me to control two motors with one focus knob. What's actually happening is the focus knob is kind of set internally to control both the zoom and the focus axes, and this lens motor down here is set to be a zoom motor. So to kind of explain the setup, I have an EMIP module. I'm talking to the internal radio in this Alexa 35. We're going out of the lens mount LBUS port into the first motor, set its focus, and then down here we have the zoom motor, which is on the focus axis of this lens down here. Alexa Mini LF is actually just acting as a lens mount. The camera's not even on, it's not interfering in any way. These two lenses are exactly the same. They're both brand new, they both have the same focal length, they both have the same scale class for the focus scale, which means that all of the marks on the focus scale for both of these lenses are the same distance apart. And I've also set both of these motors to just torque level two to kind of make this as fair a comparison as possible. Now, you'll notice when I rock backwards and forwards, especially, it's really obvious this top lens motor, which is the lens motor that's running software 2.0, is much snappier and faster to react to changes from the focus knob than the bottom lens motor is, which is running the older firmware. So particularly when you need to react to you know, unexpected things happening on set or talent moving a little bit forward, this new firmware is going to make sure that you keep things sharper in more situations. Now, one thing to note, it doesn't actually change the maximum speed that the lens motor can move at. For example, if I do a very long focus pull, you notice that you don't really see much of a change. It's only in those short, fast movements. And that's because we're not increasing the maximum speed that the lens motor can move at. We're just changing how fast it reacts to inputs from the focus knob. But there is a way to make the Seaforce Mini behave as a faster lens motor. And that's by increasing the diameter of your focus gear. So the Seaforce Mini by default comes with a 40 teeth gear, but you can also fit the 50 teeth gear onto that lens motor. The 50 teeth gear was the default gear with the CLM4 motor, and of course you can still buy it separately. So when you add those extra 10 teeth per rotation on the lens motor, you're traveling a longer distance on the focus barrel, which equates to the lens motor basically moving faster. So by moving from 40 to 50 teeth, you increase the maximum speed that the motor can push the lens by 25%. 
So why don't we always recommend you use a 50 teeth gear? Well, there is a trade-off when you increase the maximum speed, you are also reducing the maximum torque available to the system. So you should probably bump up the torque setting on your lens motor. And if you're using vintage you know, lenses that are quite stiff and need a lot of torque to move, then we wouldn't recommend that you use a larger size gear. But it works really well and I have the same example here to show you how it works. So at the top we have the 50 teeth gear running the new firmware on this motor and on the bottom we have a 40 teeth gear running the old firmware. And if I do some long focus pulls here, you'll notice that the top motor, well it reaches its destination quite a bit earlier than the bottom motor because of the larger size of the gear. So SUP 2.0 with the twice as responsive reaction time of the motors plus 50 teeth gear is really a cool way to transform your mini motors into something that you'll probably find a lot better to use on set. Now, couple of other points. One, this works really well for focus tracking. So if you are someone who is using a focus bug system, for example, with focus tracking, you'll find that the better reaction times and the faster maximum speed of the lens motors really contributes to focus tracking working in a much better way. Second thing is just to bear in mind about lens data and the system being able to detect what the size of the gear is. So we need to know how big the gear is in order to accurately give you lens data when you're using lens files. If you have an LDS or LDS2 lens, you can change the gear that's on your motor and the system will automatically detect which one it is and you won't have a problem. There's nothing extra that you need to do. If you're using lens files and you send the lens file before you calibrate the motors, then the system can also automatically detect what size gear you are using. The trick is, if you calibrate your uh, lens motors before it has lens data in the system, then it can't work out what the size of the gear is and you'll need to make sure that you set it manually, which you can do either in your camera in the motor settings or in the high five, also of course in the motor settings. You can make lens files with any size gear, but if you do that, just make sure that the system is aware that you're using a different size gear than the default one if you are, and then you can still use the default gear on your lens motor with lens files you created with a different gear, it all works fine, as long as the system knows what size gear you're using. All right, let's look at encoder mode. The second major feature in SUP 2.0 is encoder mode. And actually this is only specific to the C-Force mini motor, and I'll explain why in a second. Encoder mode, is a way to allow me to adjust the lens on the lens barrel or with another device, even though I might have a lens motor connected. And it's pretty cool. So what I have to do is I have to turn off the control from, in this example, the high five to the lens motor I wanna put in encoder mode. So let's take Iris for example. I have to go and turn off the slider control because you know at the moment I'm controlling the Iris motor with my slider. So if I go into the control setup, go to slider and turn it off, I get this familiar red and green blinking state here on the C-Force Mini motor, which tells me that there is no controller attached. It's calibrated, but nothing is set up to control it. When it's in that state, I can just move the lens barrel. And you'll notice that the light here changes to blue, which is kind of new, and I get full lens data now. So if you are a DP or you're working with a DP who wants to control the iris by themselves on the lens, you can do this and still know what the iris position is. Of course, you still get your depth of field readout as well. And for every frame in every clip, you are recording a dynamic iris position. So then that's also displayed in the status overlays on your monitor, it's recorded with every frame for VFX, and it's streamed out of the camera, which is super useful for virtual production workflows. Now, it doesn't work with the C-Force Plus because the C-Force Plus motor has a much higher internal resistance because it has a lot more torque available to it in that motor, and you'd be pushing quite hard against the C-Force Plus even when it's off, so we haven't made that a feature for the Plus motor, but it will work with any C-Force Mini motor. Depending on the tolerances of the motor, you might find that some are a little bit stiffer than others, and that's just because that the motors weren't built with this function in mind. It's not like a completely freewheeling uh, lens encoder that you might have had like our LDE-1, for example, 
but I think for 99% of applications, this works super well, it behaves really nicely. But what if you're not using a lens with LDS2 because there's not a huge amount of reasons to use encoder mode with signature primes because those lenses have encoders built into them. So they supply the data, not the lens mode. But in this instance, well, it's slightly different. I have a museum piece here. This is a variable prime. So I have three axes, focus, iris, and zoom, um, or maybe variability. And I can set all of these to be in encoder mode. So if I just turn this high five off, because I don't need any of the axes running currently, then you'll see that all the lens motors here will start flashing when it recognizes that there's no controller connected. And then manually, I can go through here and I can adjust all of these to be blue. So now I have an encoded value using the lens table that I sent from the high five that, that is then stored in the camera. The camera's managing the motors, the motors are in encoder mode. So this particularly for virtual production workflows, I think is really useful. I mean, we see a lot of people who run a separate system or dual system where you might have a focus puller and their lens motors for actually controlling the lens. And then you have a separate little encoder on there as well with its own box, heaps of extra equipment on the camera. Whereas here, the focus puller can still use the same lens motors that are acting as encoders for the virtual production team. All the data is handled by the camera. All the data would then be sent out from the ethernet port here and streamed into our live link application. So that's a really nice little workflow. All right, that's been SUP 2.0. There's one extra thing I wanted to point out. So you probably noticed that I have something extra sitting on top of my high five. And this is the C-Motion C-Distance, which now that the high five is booting back up, will show me here whatever focus axis, zoom or distance measurement I like in a really high bright display. They're now available with a special little bracket that you can mount this very neatly to the high five with a right angle to right angle 20 centimeter cable. But this is a slightly different one with a keyway thing. Check it out on the website, but pretty cool device, extremely bright and totally daylight viewable. All right, let's talk about updating the firmware. All right, how do you update the firmware for the motors? Well, there are three main ways that you can do this. You can do this with the ECS Sync app, you can do this with the Hi5 and a USB stick, or you can do it with a camera. Starting with the ECS Sync app. So once your Hi5 and your phone are talking with Bluetooth together, then you'll be able to get to the ARRI device page. And then if I connect the Hi5 with an LBUS cable to the lens motors, the lens motors also have to be powered separately. So in this case, the camera is on and they're being powered through the camera, um, but you could also just go LBUS to DTAP. Well, then I plug in the LBUS port uh, cable into the open port here. And then in just about a second, you'll see that it will detect all the devices now connected to the Hi5. So I can see actually the Alexa 35 here, and you can see the three C-Force motors as well. If I click on one of the motors, I then get the option to download and install the update. So that's one way that you could do it. The other way, not using the ECS Sync app, would be to use the Hi5. You would have to get a USB-C drive or I'll actually, I prefer to use this little SD card adapter. So I have an SD card on here. I put that into the high five. I have previously gone and formatted the uh, SD card to have the correct folder structure, which you can also actually do inside the high five too, um, so that I know where to put the firmware. So it has to be in a folder called ARRI slash ECS. And then you put the up sorry, the update file for the motors in that ECS folder. And then here I scroll down to system and then I go to update and then update LBUS devices. And again, I get a list of everything that's connected to the LBUS port on the Hi5. So I can see that I have three C-Force mini motors here. I can click on that again and then choose the update that I want to install. In this case, it would be 2.0. The third way to do this, if I disconnect the Hi5 and I take out my USB stick, or my card reader adapter, and I put it inside the camera, I can do a very similar thing. So if you go into the menu, and then into system, update, and then update LBUS devices, then I can see again the three serial numbers for my three C-Force mini motors, and it'll show me what the firmware version is currently and what the new one is that is detected on 
the little SD card I have in that adapter there, and then I can perform the update. You have to do each motor at its own time, and once you've updated a motor, even if it's only one, please power cycle the motors so that when they wake up, they're in their new firmware state and they're ready to go. All right, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section down below, and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.